Hi everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a July reading wrap up. At the beginning of July, I had grand plans for myself to read seven books. Yeah, I think I read four. However, the four books that I did read were pretty chunky, I would say, pretty thick, if you will. First off, it was Jane Austen July, so I did read Emma by Jane Austen, and pretty thick, I would say. I don't know if it's just this edition, but yeah, this was a good like 470 pages or so, so yeah, this took a big chunk of the first half of July. I fell way behind on the reading schedule for Jane Austen July. This was like a read-along group read book. Fell way behind on that, so I did get to the end eventually. This was a story that I already knew personally. I had seen the 90s movie with Gwyneth Paltrow many times. It was one that I would watch with my mom a lot. It was one of her favorites. I think we maybe even owned it on VHS or DVD, whatever we had back then. Even being familiar with the story, this one had some story plots and subplots that I had either forgotten about or maybe you had been left out of the movie versions. By the end of the book, I decided I do like Emma. I feel like Emma is a little bit of an unpopular Jane Austen character. I've seen several people say that this is their least favorite Jane Austen protagonist, and I could kind of see where they're coming from. Emma is a busybody. She is in everybody's business. She wants to hook everybody up with each other, and for that reason, She's a little bit unlikable. She's also a little bit snooty sometimes. She has very strong opinions about who some of her friends should be with. Actually, Emma reminds me of a friend that I used to have a long time ago. So side note, kind of brought back those memories. Honestly, there's a little bit of Emma in everybody. We're all a little bit nosy. We're all kind of up in each other's people's business. We like drama. However, what I love about Emma is that she learns how to be a decent person through her mistakes. She does take her mistakes and grows from them. She doesn't just stay a busybody, gossipy type of person. I wouldn't even say she's a gossip. I just think that she kind of knows what's good for everybody in her life and I think a lot of people kind of get rubbed the wrong way by that. But it's also a testament to Emma's naivety and it definitely makes for some fun and interesting um, events in the book. It makes for some very hilarious moments. I like Emma a lot. She's strong-willed and she also learns how to be humble a little bit. Uh, yeah, I guess I could say more than a little bit. She learns, she learns something from her mistakes. So I liked him a lot. I gave it four stars. I struggled slightly with my own focus and the writing style. I just hadn't read an older writing style in a little while. Hey, that rhymed. So it took me a while to kind of get in the groove, but once I did, I think this is definitely a very entertaining Jane Austen novel. I would definitely read it again too. So ultimately we're giving Emma four stars. The next book I finished, I actually can't remember if I finished this next or not, but we're gonna say that I did. I finished The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I'm one of the hosts for Storm Along 2020 and we took two months to read this book and wow, it was worth the time and worth the close reading that I did. You can see my crazy amount of tabs. Going forward in the series, I'm gonna try to tab a little bit less because this definitely slowed me down as I was like really intensely reading it for like specific things. And I wanna just be able to read these a little bit faster and kind of enjoy the more like momentum, fast pace, and kind of let the narrative like carry me forward and try not to get as bogged down in like tabbing every little time a magic system is revealed or every little time a character is introduced. I'm not gonna be that detailed going forward, but I'm kind of glad that I did it for this first book because I think it really made me digest things more. I'm not gonna talk a lot about this book because I did do a full book review non-spoilers. If you want, you can watch that video to hear all of my gushy final thoughts, but I loved this. This is one of my new favorite books for sure. I can't wait to continue in the series. This is just an amazing, 
amazing feat of fantasy and literature and Sanderson and just no one can compare to Sanderson right now and what he's doing in the fantasy genre so I just I loved it five stars 500 stars if that's allowed the next book I actually buddy read with Amanda from the curly reader and um, also one of her friends named Kara and we had a really good time um, talking about this book we all kind of had similar feelings about it in the end like none of us hated this book and all of us kind of came away with the same feelings and that book was the Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. I'm gonna stand by this statement. I think this is a sleeper book. I think this got kind of bad reception in the get-go. And if you look on Goodreads, it has a shockingly low rating. It has like 3.63 or something like that. It's not fair to this book, I think. I think this book is much better than that. That's a pretty low rating for Goodreads, but I can see how fans of Marie Lu maybe would have been turned off by this one because it's probably very different than her other stuff. It's not fast paced. It's much more quiet and contemplative and there's a bit of magical realism, maybe portal fantasy. I'm just not sure how to define it, but definitely magical realism, which I know works sometimes and doesn't work other times depending on who the reader is. So I personally loved this book, but disclaimer there, I was also very interested in the subject matter itself. This is about Mozart's sister. He had an older sister, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, the composer. He had an older sister who was also a musician. She was very talented. She is more notarized for her skills in piano and organ performance. So that is sort of what she was known for. But in this book, she also composes. And I think maybe that happened in real life too. I actually need to do some digging and see like what was the real life of Mozart's sister and then compare it to this one because I do have some questions about that. But Marie Lu wrote this book after reading a biography about, about Mozart and she was very interested in the mention of this older sister and what would it be like to kind of live in your younger brother's shadow. And as a woman, you can't really become a composer. Women of that time were expected to learn music in those like higher nobility families. It was a very accomplished thing for a young lady to learn music. Actually in Emma, there's lots of talk about a particular character who is very skilled at the piano and then um, they talk about Emma also being skilled in some ways so it was very much an admirable thing for a woman and almost an expected thing women had to like do some kind of art and they were kind of shamed if they were not good at it so in this book Nanarol has that skill but she also wants to compose and she wants to share that with the world but the society she lives in really doesn't allow that. So I really enjoyed that story and exploring her more. My only complaint with this book is I wish we could have gone deeper. There's a magical kingdom in this that goes alongside of her story and her brother. And the magical kingdom is based on a real kingdom, quote unquote, that they created when they were kids called the Kingdom of Back. And I loved that it was actually based on a real uh, figure of their imaginations. I think that's just such a cool concept. Like, what a good idea for a book. So interesting. My only complaint with this book is that I felt like the stories were not super developed. It's a little bit more fairy tale-ish on the um, magical side. It reminded me a little bit of Peter Pan. If you ever watched... Um, the show Once Upon a Time, the Peter Pan in that show, um, it kind of has the same vibes. Like there's this dark magical world and there's this like fairy creature and I can't tell you much more because I don't want to spoil it for you. I think part of that is the enjoyment of the book um, is getting to explore that magical world so I won't say any more about it but it gave me it has like a dark fairy tale vibe to it which I loved and then pairing it with historical fiction was just like 
two of my favorite things and I just thought this had the potential to be a five star but I kind of just was missing something. I don't know if it's because it's a YA book and I just, it, it's a short book and it can only do so much in 300 pages. I think maybe that has something to do with it but I wanted more from it. I wanted to go deeper in both the historical world and the fantasy world. I just wanted more from both. So I think this was such a great idea and the blending of both. I would recommend it if you're interested in this. I think if you're a fan of like fast paced action YA, not that book. Okay, not for you. But if you want something a little bit more slower and that makes you just think and if you want to be like very steeped in this um, like beautiful Austrian culture and you like some kind of like fae vibes, you like some dark fairy tale in there, I think this will be right up your alley. Four stars, really enjoyed this, would even read it again. And then finally the last chunky chunky book. A lot of chunkers. A lot of chunkers this month. Hero of Ages by Brandon Sanderson. I finished the Mistborn trilogy era one. I'm very excited that I have finished this now. I feel like now I'm I'm in the club. I'm in the Mistborn club. I can talk about Mistborn now with people. That's a good feeling. This book lands at a five star for me as well. Just like the rest of the series, this is just a five star series. I think one of the most interesting things about this trilogy is the magic system and it has such a specific way that it works and Brandon really follows through with that. Brandon, we're on a first name basis now. Sanderson really follows through with staying consistent in his magic system. He really does a great job of pacing the story so that you are getting information bit by bit and it's kind of like, I felt like he was always like pulling me along with like a carrot. Like I just kept, I had to keep following it. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I think it makes for a really compelling fast paced read because there's always something new almost in every chapter that you're learning. I got bogged down in this one a little bit with the wars and sieges. I felt like that was a little bit, I don't know, a little bit maybe too lengthy. I, I, for some reason, I had a hard time focusing on those parts, even though those parts were important to the story. But this one, I think it did have a little bit of a drag in the middle for me. But um, the ending, the beginning, just picking up where we left off, seeing how everything wraps up, there's definitely some, some choices made. And I feel like you're either going to like those choices or you're not. I really liked those choices in the end. I thought this made sense how it wrapped up. And I'm also very interested to see how this book fits in the Cosmere. I have more of an idea now of the Cosmere and um, how some of the tie-ins are working now that I'm seeing more, now, to, now that I'm reading more Sanderson books, that's been fun to see. It's kind of like being in the know of like a secret club. And I feel like I'm starting to be part of that secret club that understands the Cosmere, although I still I still don't really understand the Cosmere at all, let's be honest. But the bits and pieces that I'm starting to see are cool and I'm looking forward to learning more. Can't say a lot about this one because it is the third in the series. However, I do this month plan on doing a spoiler filled video review about Mistborn Era 1. So if you are a fan and you have read these, you have that to look forward to. I'll probably do a spoiler free and um, spoiler filled section in that video. So we will talk about this at a later date. Also just wanted to mention I buddy read this with Rainy. So Rainy, thank you very much for sticking through with me. I can't believe we read the whole trilogy together. It was really fun. I'm glad we got to kind of dissect these together because they definitely get complicated and so it was nice to have somebody to talk to about them and to kind of like figure out, wait, what happened? Wait, what was that? So it was nice to talk to Rainy about that. Those are all the books that I read in the month of July. I would love to know if you have any thoughts about these books. Let me know also how your reading month in July went. I would love to know if you have any favorites from the last month. If you want to keep up with what I read in the future, make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon to make sure you are notified about my videos. Keep reading great books and until next time, bye bye.